Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I am your host, X dot, E dot, L dot, O. And today I wanna to go over Reaper's Media Explorer or browser. I wanna show you guys some of the things that I use to move around inside this Media Explorer a lot quicker than I do in any other DAW. Let's go. All right, so here we are in Reaper and the theme I'm using is called Reaper Tips. Um, over here on the left-hand side is the Media Explorer. Uh, and usually if you don't see it or you don't have it pulled up, you can hold down Control, Alt, and X on your keyboard and that will actually remove it or bring it back. I also changed my shortcut to B just to bring up like a browser feature. So that's my shortcut. You can change it if you want to, but I think it's a lot easier. I just hit B on the keyboard and it'll pull up or close out the Media Explorer. I'm actually gonna hit on this last one here. This will actually dock or undock the Media Explorer. So I'm gonna undock it so I can make it a lot bigger for you guys. I know a lot of people like to have it down here in this dock with the mixer. I'm not necessarily a fan of that because uh, I usually like to still have my mixer. And if I need to drag something in, I can just drag it in from this side here. I guess that's from my FL Studio all those years using that. It just kind of feels more familiar when it's on the left-hand side and I can just kind of drag and drop. I know some people even use it on the right-hand side and have it more like the, the logic way of actually searching for things. So I'm gonna hit on this dock, all right? And I'm gonna move it over and make it a lot bigger. And this is one of the great things about this uh, Explorer is that you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, uh, you can kind of fine tune it to the way you want it to actually be. So let's make it pretty big here so we'll be able to kind of see all the things going on inside of it. All right, so um, looking at it now, it doesn't seem like much, but you have the option to kind of bring this up or down. This is basically where your file will actually sit, either audio or MIDI. Um, you have a, a like a text box letting you know what's going on with the track. And usually down here toward the right, it will tell you like the beats per minute or what it thinks that the beats per minute is for the sample or track. Um, and then it'll tell you what is actually loaded in this section down here. Seeing that we started with the docking, which is over here, let's kind of move uh, going toward the left. So this one here is to preserve like the pitch of the sample. So if you're changing like the rate of the sample itself, it'll actually go with this little pitch. So in here, this little box, this will go along with the tempo of the track. So if you hit on this one, it'll go exactly with the tempo of the track. Uh, if you hit on this one, it'll be two times as fast. And this one is halftime. You can halftime your samples right from here. Makes it so much easier to kind of get everything set up and going. Um, you don't have to have it on, but it does help out a lot. I usually like to leave this one on to actually match my tempo. So if I'm finding like a drum loop or something, I can just play the drum loop in the Explorer and actually still be playing the track. And if it matches the tempo, I can just drag it right into the Reaper and not miss a beat. Uh, I think that's really, really dope. Um, not all dolls can actually do that. So this one here is like the media information. So that box that I'll tell you about down here, this is the box. So if I click on this, it'll remove that box. So I like to have it. So I like to know some sometimes what's going on inside the track and it'll let you know right there. And this right here will detect the pitch of the sounds. So if your sound is in like C, it'll tell you right down here, like toward this bottom right hand corner that is in the note of C. And this one right here will give you the option where the bar is starting. So if you don't have this on, it'll start whenever it wants to, whenever you hit play. But if you have this on, this one here, it'll start at the beginning of a bar. So if you have your bars set to like 16 bars, it'll start on that next bar. So it'll stay on beat basically. And this one is the autoplay. And this is how you would actually send it to a track. So if you had like a sample selected, you can just send it directly to the track itself. So I'm going to go through this lo-fi toolkit and of Cymatic. So if you do have Cymatics, you can kind of follow along. I'm using the lo-fi toolkit. I'm just going to go to the MIDI here. Yes, Reaper does play the MIDI. If you have an instrument track set up, it will play through that instrument. So, for instance, if I click on this first one and play it. So it'll play even the MIDI if you have an instrument selected, right? So let's go to the second one here. And as you see, there's a little dot right here that for the mark. So if I wanted to actually favorite this one, all I want to do is double click right here and it'll favorite that one. And the marks let you know which one you actually played already. 
So if I go down here, right? So it'll let me know which ones I played. But seeing that I favored this one, I can just go back up to this one. And let's say I just wanted that first, uh, that first like half, I can click right here and just drag across. And now it'll only play this part here. Right, and let's say I wanted to keep that, I can right click on it and I can do whichever portion I want. So if I wanted to do the part that's actually loop enabled, I can send that to the track. If I wanted to do the part that's not enabled, this part down here, I will click on here. I think that's really dope that you can actually do that with the MIDI. So I'm gonna go up one and we're gonna go to this melody loops and let's click on one of these. Right, so we have that sample there. So let's say we didn't want it to be, we wanted it to be the regular uh, tempo. As you see down here, it's telling me that it may be 70 beats per minute now because we're speeding it up to match whatever it is for the DAW. So let's take this off, right? So this is gonna play at the regular speed of the sample. Right, and I can do that uh, double time. And I can also do it half time. Right, so it sounds like it's probably around 70 beats per minute anyway. So me doing a half time just made it play half the time of whatever the DAW's tempo is. So let's just say, you know, you wanted just a piece of the sample, you can do that as well. So you can do go right here and kind of loop this section of the sample. You can zoom in and get that fine tuning if you wanted to. So let's say I just wanted this one piece here, right? I can just right click on here and insert on a new track. So boom, so I have that in here now. So now it's a part of the track. So I think that's really dope that you can actually do that inside here and you can stretch this out if you want to and just hold down Alt, give me a little hand and make it one bar long. Right. So let's say we wanted to find like some uh, some drums to go with it, right? So let's do a full drum loop. Right, so um, put that to a new track. So let's stretch this out. I'm gonna hold down Alt on here and stretch this out to make it four bars. And then I can just duplicate this over. So now we have a nice little loop. All right, and then for this last one, I'm gonna reverse it. Um, I have a shortcut here for my page down. So I'm gonna reverse that last one.
right? And I can favorite this one as well. So I can just double click on it and it'll favorite it. All right. So let's say, you know, we already favorited the track. You can actually change like the custom tags, the title, the artist, the album, like all these things can actually be set up, right? And you have a couple of other things down here for like the length and the bit rate. It does tell you for these, not all samples tell you the bit rate um, or the peak dBs or the loudness. Like all these can be added onto these samples if you want to. You can right click on here and then go down to edit, made a data tag and kind of do whatever you want to to the actual sample to edit it. I don't usually use it, so I'm not going to go through it <laughs> just to be honest with you guys. I usually just use it for just this favorites part and make sure I know which ones I already tried to use. Those are the, my main priorities when I'm actually doing this. It does have an option to do like a pitch for your uh, sample down here and also a rate. It also has a volume so you could turn down the volume of these samples if you wanted to as well. Usually if you just double click, it'll bring it back to that zero point. All right, so you have a play, pause, and a stop option, uh, a replay option. And this is where you can actually choose where the sound is actually gonna go out through. And like I said, down here, this will give you your sound itself, whatever sound you're actually using. And this says that it may be 85 beats per minute uh, from what it thinks this sample is. So those are some of the features that I really like about this Explorer. I usually have mine in the corner, as you see over here on the side. I made this bigger, so I'm gonna bring it back down. I usually don't need to have it that big. But yeah, that's why I really, really enjoy Reaper's MIDI editor. I mean, it just makes everything so much easier for me when I'm trying to make something. So as you see, it didn't take that long to make this little beat here. And one of the things that I really like about this MIDI editor is if I go like to my kits, right? Let's say I'm in my kits and I wanted to search for, uh, let's say hi hat loop, right? Hi hat loop. And it'll pull up all the hi hat loops that I have in there and it'll give me all the different information down here. But I usually have mine up in this left hand corner, but you know, you can just always, you know, kind of go through them. And as you see, I have the marks going on there. So, so let's say we have the plaque, the, the track actually playing, right? Right? If we wanted to add like a hi-hat on top of that. And just that simple, you can kind of just throw some loops in, in here that'll actually match up with whatever you're actually doing. I think this would makes it really great to me. Like, I mean, I know Ableton does the same thing where you can kind of match up the tempo, kind of just throw a loop in there and it'll just sync up with the track. But Reaper has it as well. And I just wanted to let you guys know that, um, yeah, Reaper is not to be slept on, man. I'm gonna dock it again. So I usually like to have mine docked on the side. Like, you know, just to have everything kind of uh, set up over here. Uh, if you had like a folder that you wanted to kind of get a real quick access to, so like, let's say the Cymatics folder, right? So if I right click on here, I can give it an option that says add to shortcut list, or you can even make a database from this folder, which is really dope. You could copy it, uh, you could rename it, you can delete it, uh, and you can show in like the Explore Finder, so it'll bring up like a little Explore. Uh, inside of Windows for you. So like if I wanted to just add it as a shortcut and boom, now I have it as a shortcut right here on the side. Um, makes it a lot easier for me to get to. So if I wanna go here, or if I know I'm going to Cymatics, I go directly to that folder and get into Cymatics. So this is what 
the MIDI editor means for me. I mean, it just makes it so much easier for me to make whatever I'm gonna make inside of Reaper. All right, there you go. The Media Explorer inside of Reaper. I think it's the best Media Explorer or browser in any of the DAWs I've ever used. Um, just being honest with you guys. Like, I can type stuff in there and find what I need and it pulls it up and it's very fast compared to a lot of the other DAWs that I've been using. And it gives me an option to edit the, the audio right there inside the MIDI editor. It also plays along with the with the DAW. So if I'm playing something like a, a, you know, I already have like some keys laid out. If I want to find like a drum pattern, anything like that, I can just play it while it's actually playing and it'll match the tempo of the track. Or if I drag and drop anything in there, it'll match the tempo of the track. So those things to me are definitely game changers. I think it makes my workflow so much easier, so much faster inside of Reaper compared to any other dolls I've been using. And I've used quite a few dolls. <laughs> Uh, but with that being said, make sure you guys, if you have any questions or comments about the Media Explorer, leave that below in the comment section of this video. Or if you have any questions or concerns at all, just leave them a comment below. I do have a Discord server. If you guys want to join the Discord, the link should be below in the description as well. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. If you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It does help out the channel does help spread the word about Reaper and how great this doll really is to other people. And with that being said, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time. Peace. Hey you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.